these are the diamonds. So um, let's start with this one and I'll show you what you can, basically the end product will kind of look like. So it will be like this. You can actually make a creative design, like zigzag lines, like this. So we'll, we'll do one line first. And as long as we go, you can create more, you can use different colors and just create a design of your own. So let's get started. Is, does everybody have their uh, fabric in the hoop? Make sure the fabric's in the hoop. I'll give a, I'll give you a minute and just do it and just give me a heads up or message that, yeah, you're ready and we'll start. I see some familiar names and faces. <laughs> And if you're using uh, this thread, just one strand is fine. But if you're using this one, I would say go for like three strands of this thread. And make sure it's just arm length. Don't keep it too long. Just keep the thread arm length because it will get tangled very easily. Yeah, okay, so let's just do the fabric first and then we'll do the thread. I had a quick question. Yeah. Is there a specific way to cut it? Um, no, you just, 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 uh, can I see the fabric? If it's, I would need to see the, yeah, you can just put your hoop inside the fabric. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Okay. Because I wanted to cut out a smaller piece. So I just want to just put the, this. put the hoop on the fabric and just cut it and then just uh, insert the fabric in the hoop. Perfect. Thank you yeah. so much. No problem. And about the thread, so let's just uh, use arm length, just this much is fine, and just cut it. And one length should be longer than the other and make a tiny little ball at the end of the longer thread, okay? It's up to you can make, make sure it's like big enough so that the fabric doesn't go, the thread doesn't go through the fabric like this, so uh, it's visible over here, the knot, yeah. Okay, so everybody's ready with the thread and the, we are just watching the hair and we'll come back. Okay, Sadia. So um, everybody ready with the thread, the fabric? Yeah, can I just see some message and if, cause I cannot see anybody, I just see like three people, so yeah. Okay, hi, Rafi. Awesome, okay, ready, okay, good, good, good. All right, so let's start. So it's up to you either way, you're comfortable. If you've done embroidery, you can hold the hoop any way you want. And I will be holding it this way. So anywhere in the fabric, just pop through any hole you see in the fabric, right? Anywhere. It's up to you. If you keep it, want to keep it in the middle, that's fine too. Yeah. Okay. And just make sure you cut the excess thread from the back because it will get it will come in the way of the embroidery, and you don't want that. All right. So what you do is. Now we will be counting because with Pulkari, the design is going to be very geometric and you have to count the threads of the fabric to create the design, right? So what you do is we are, will be going, I'm going one, uh, I'm going down, down on the fabric. So I will be counting uh, six, you see like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. So from the sixth one, I will push my needle and take out the thread like this. If you want me to do it again, I can do it again. But if it's fine, then I'll just keep it. I'm assuming it's fine, so I'll just go ahead, right? So from the back side, it will be just nothing, just a dot and the thread, right? All right, so on the front side, you see you have, uh, we will be going in the, like, you know how Chevron is, so we will be making slanted design. So what you do is, 
Okay. All right. So what you do is we will be going diagonal. So how you do diagonally is, you see, you came out from here. This is the, your main line, right? So we will be going one up over here. So you leave this, you leave this hole, the one next to it, and you go one up. So you go in the opposite direction. You go back, you come over here, you come over here. Is it clear enough? No? Okay. So you see, I went from here. This is my main point, right? This is my thread. So instead of going, you just go diagonal, diagonal in like you go one up. Not on the same level, you go one up over here. You see, this is one block. Ignore this one, go one up. Basically, adjust into from where you came out, right? So pull your thread. And again, you count six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that will automatically take you to the point where, like the diagonal point from where it should come. It should be symmetrical exactly. And now you have two slanted lines on the fabric. Does everybody have two slanted lines like this, right? And the back side is just two dots, right? Yes, okay, good. So we do this again, again, the same thing. You go one up this way, diagonally, and you can count six, but if you are okay with it, then you know from where to come out. I will be counting. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that automatically takes you from where you should be coming out. Is it clear enough? Yeah. So now I have three slanted lines, right? One next to each other. So just keep on doing that. Let's make three more lines like this. Again, you go up. And you can count again, one, two, three, four, five, six. Any questions so far? You can message if any confusion, I can do it again. So uh, let's do let's do three more. Again, the same thing. You go one up in the slanted direction and count it. This one is, I would say, thirty-two. Yeah, thirty-two. It's better to have a coarse fabric uh, because the warp and weft will be very tighter. My thread does not seem to be thicker. Uh, which thread are you using, Saida? If you're using the floss, this floss thread, make sure it you have like three strands of this thread. If your fabric is very, yeah, this is the back side. This is the back side. It's just darts. Okay, can you see it? No, it's not too clear. Yeah, your design is coming fine. Your design is coming fine. Design's okay, but I think yeah. it's too thin. Can you move it a bit up? I can't see the embroidery. Can you bring it closer? It's fine, it's fine. You're using the cross stitch fabric, so it's fine. It'll be just one lines, you'll see. And if you just use a uh, like a thicker floss, like yeah. maybe, I think you're just using one strand probably or two strands. If it's you use two. even more, it's two, right? Yeah. yeah. So even if you use like four strands or even three, that would be fine. Or once you're done, then you can fill it in later on. So that's fine. Okay, thanks. Yeah, as long as you understand the technique. Okay. Is it 14 count? The, which count should be less? Uh, Linda. All right. I'm just wondering so, if the stitch count should be less. Instead of six, make it four or? It's up to you. It's up to you. That's fine. Okay, it's thank up to you. you. Yeah. All right. So now I have made one side of the chevron. Now we'll do the opposite side. We did this side, this side, and now we're, we're doing the opposite side. So basically the reverse of what you're doing. You're going one down, right? So now what you do is initially we were going, we were going up over here. Now, oh look, 
a bit lost in how look. Can I see the backside, uh, Fatma? And can I see the front side? Okay, so uh, what is happening is uh, you're just going on over it, you know? In, let, let's just leave it like that because the front is fine. The front is perfect. So let's just uh, do the other side and to see how the back side comes, right? So now the back side, we will be going one down. So this was the main point. Now you go one down from here, right? Yeah, okay. So look Fatma this way, basically just side by side to side by side. You don't have to go over the thread, but it's fine, it's fine. The back side doesn't really matter a lot. It's the front, which should be, uh, like symmetrical much more and now you do the same thing you count it's up to you if you the stitch count is four six eight whatever that's fine give us a couple okay so again count six one two three four five six and you again keep on doing that until this side will be equal to this side okay And once you do that, just message yes or done so that we do the other side again. You can count. Oh, you're fast, Ash. All right, so now we have, very nice, Maria, very good. Good job. So you see how it's coming exactly on the same line. Just to make sure what you do is just drag your needle and make sure it falls on the same line, right? Just drag your needle this way. Yeah. Done, okay, awesome. Awesome. So we'll just do wait one more minute and then we'll do the, op the other side. But if you know what to do, it's basically we're going up again. This side should be equal to this side, then down again. And this side should be equal to this side. So if you have an idea what we have to do, so just go for it. Very cool. All right. So again, the same thing. Now we are going up. So you go diagonally over here. And if you don't have to count, then you know exactly where to come out, just exactly diagonal to this point instead of counting. But it is better to count since it has to be symmetrical. And if you leave one uh, count, or if you leave one, um, you can say the whole of the fabric, you'll know there is, it's not being, it's not very symmetrical then. Can't hear. Someone is saying they can hear G50. Can you hear me now? Maybe you can log in again. All right. Same thing. Same thing again, just keep doing it. My weave is too difficult to color. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine if your weave is too tight, that's fine. As long as uh, you think it's symmetrical, it's coming out fine. As if the technique is fine, it's good. The fabric, because obviously um, whatever was there available, you're using it, so it's perfectly fine. At the end, I will also share the link of the fabric. I think it was on the Eventbrite. I think it was, right? Uh, that's the closest fabric for Pulkari uh, because the warp and weft are very symmetrical and uh, I will share at the end. So I would say um, just get it from Amazon. And uh, there's also a place uh, here in uh, Toronto. 
they also give the fabric i'll send the link also all right So again, keep doing that until this side, this side will be equal to this side, right? I think um, let's just, uh, it's up to you how, much, how long you want to do. Then I would want to do the another line over here underneath. And we can change the color too. I had a quick question. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually running out of thread. Is there a specific way of how to tie it in the back if we yeah, need to switch yeah. out of thread? I'll, I'll tell you. So I'm just going to do it. So if you need to tie what you do is just put a little bit of pressure on your uh, motif, right, from the back side, and just take any thread of the embroidery. Do not take the fabric, just any thread like this, right? Just break through in the middle. And make sure the needle doesn't come on the design. Did you do it through the embroidery floss? Or did yeah, you do embroidery, it through... embroidery and the fabric. It's the fabric, basically. The fabric, okay. Yeah, not the... Fabric. the... Not the embroidery, okay. yeah, but make sure it doesn't come on the front side of the th uh, design, right? Perfect. So once you do that, yeah. once you do that, just pull through and you will have a little hoop at the back, like a loop at the back this way, right? Yeah. yeah. And you just take it through that this way Perfect. and Thank pull you. it. Okay. Yeah. And then you can change your thread. So I will be doing another line of this one. If you don't want to count, that's fine. I'm also not counting, but just make sure uh, the count is sim same in every line you make. So now this is equal to this side, this is equal to this one. Everything should be equal. I'm just doing one more and then we'll change the thread and make another design. Okay, so let's just um, pick another thread. There's also another way like um, this way, I'm just going to do another one. And then in if you want to keep it continuous, you can always just keep this thread and just start over again. But if you want to change the thread, it's up to you. But I'm changing the thread. So let's just see how to knot it at the back. So the same thing, take, the fabric from the back side this way and make sure it doesn't come on the front side of the design and pull your thread and you will have this little hoop at the back this little loop you say right and just take the needle through it and tight it if you want, I can show this again. Just, just, just message in the chat box. Or if it's fine, then uh, I'll change the cut thread of the color of the thread, and we'll go do the other, another chevron underneath. Okay. So you take the fabric from the back side, 
this way yeah and pull your needle just hold on to the thread at the back if it's too long enough just hold on to it sorry yeah so just hold on to it and once you will have a little hoop at the back just take your needle through it this way and pull it yeah okay so now i'm going to change the color of the thread and we'll make another line Is, is everyone from uh, Toronto, Canada? Or where are you from? Just I just want to know where everybody's from so I have an idea and what time it is. Chicago, Montreal. <laughs> I'm in... Uh, oh, Oakville. Who is in Oakville? I'm in Oakville too. <laughs> Brampton. Nice. Vermont. Okay, so we... India. Who's from India? What time is it? It's night. Scotland, 6.30 p.m. Nice. Very cool. Birmingham, 6.30, England. <laughs> Almost midnight, yeah, I'm sure. Oh, thank you. All right. Okay, so everybody has the thread. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do the same thing again. It's up to you if you Excuse want. Excuse me, to just for a second. Can everybody just make sure they're muted so that it's not interrupted? I think someone is on. Yeah. Oh, someone is in the waiting room. Uh, she just messaged me. Can you please add her? Done. Okay, awesome. Okay, so um, it's up to you if you want to keep uh, like distance in between, it's totally fine. But if you don't want, that's fine too. So I will keep a little bit of the distance in between both the designs. So I'm leaving one hole over here and then I'm going to start from here. I'm just leaving one block, okay? And just cut the excess thread. Okay, so now the same thing again, count six or whatever the count you were doing, go down again and come out. So um, one, two, three, four, six. or even if you want to make this one a bit longer, just to show a variety, variation of the design or create something. So I'm just going to keep it longer. I'm, I'm doing eight, seven, eight. So one, one stitch, the same thing. And again, you do the same thing. You go up until this side, will be equal, it will, will come exactly in the middle and then you go down and then up basically again, the zigzag thing. So you go one up. Is there any confusion? Because I don't seem to uh, get any questions. I'm assuming you all are kind of getting the hang of it. So that's why I'm not getting any questions. I had a quick question. Yeah. Do you have any example of what it would look like if we do the variation, like you did eight instead of six versus no. make it equal? I do not have it over here. I do not have it. It's, it's uh, no, I don't have it. Sorry. But it's up to you. If you don't want to do it, that's fine too. But uh, I'm just doing it um, just to create a variety. No problem. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. 
did you just start it right below our yes right below store? right below right okay. exactly below the same the the front uh, the initial one right exactly mm -hmm. below it okay thank you no problem all right So um, I'll just we'll be learning any other. So yeah, we can also, if we have time, we can do the diamond also. I think so. If we have time, we can do the diamond. So um, I'll just talk a little bit about Pulkari also side by side. So um, this embroidery used to be done by, can I see the back one? Yeah. You can take a picture if you want. The back side of this, how the back side looks, it's just dotted lines. Meherin. Yeah, okay. So um, this embroidery used to be, I'm getting quite, no. Yeah, so this embroidery used to be done by women um, uh, back in the days in the villages and they would um, create pieces from the surroundings, for example. They would make domestic um, objects, their jewelry or something it's like um, personal possessions or animals. So it was basically, um, you can say like a sketchbook. I would say that it's like a sketchbook you're creating what you see in your surroundings and then designing. And um, every uh, for every wedding or occasion, they would create Pulgari shawls and every shawl had its meaning. So. Um, the interesting part is uh, Pulgari has a lot of uh, connotations and meanings attached to it. Like uh, there's a Pulgari bag. Bag is like a shawl where you don't see the fabric of the, the fabric, you just see embroidery. So it's like heavily, heavily, heavily embroidered. So um, the it's called Vari the bag. So in that bag, the grandmother, she makes the first stitch on the fabric when a boy is born in the family and then that shawl is given to his wife when he gets married and then the colors they use are yellow uh, yeah so yellow is for fertility so every color every motive has its meaning and um, so this the zigzag we are making it's a uh, it's basically like wave like patterns it's like water you know, so you would see that's uh, that's their depiction of kind of what they see in their surrounding and then created. But anyway, so it's interesting how every um, Pulkari shawl or every Pulkari motive has its meaning. So yeah, it started from, uh, uh, it's uh, the name is uh, Guru Nanak, if I'm not wrong. It's uh, the Sikh region. They, that was the first time they actually saw Pulkari handkerchief. Uh, and that was, I think, 15th century, I would believe. And um, another shawl is called, uh, if I'm not wrong, it's called Chop, I think, Chop. And that's done when a girl is born. So um, they, that will be all red and um, it will be given to her when she gets married. So, yeah, there are lots of uh, interesting connotations attached to Pulkari. If you're interested, there are different books you can read about and there are lots of articles. And I also share some facts on my Instagram page about Pulkari, different, uh, yeah. So if you're interested, I would say check it up. It's really fun to read about how it started and um, what's their usage now. Just thinking of more facts to talk about. And uh, yeah, so it was initially done on uh, cotton khadar fabric. And the one I'm using is called cotton khadar. It's it's a nice coarse fabric. Yeah, I'll just message you the book. I actually have a book if you guys want to see. So it's called Pulkari, uh, this one. And I'll just message the name of the book. So they have like really interesting and very crisp photos, sorry, very crisp photos of Pulkari. And it talks about each and every um, bag. Uh, I'll just type out the name of the book. Let me just send you. Yeah. 
what is it? Just a second. Actually, Rafa, if you show it underneath where you've got your embroidery, they'll be able to see the front cover of the book as well. Okay. I'll just put it here. I send the link. So um, I did Fulkari um, uh, when I was doing my bachelor's from Pakistan. So we had to choose a particular topic. And I've always been interested in um, very intricate designs. And uh, then I found out about Fulkari. I started reading about it. And I discovered that it is a it is considered as a dying craft because it is, it is not being passed on to the next generations to come. So um, I thought it's, it's this craft is so beautiful. It should not be because um, I just think every uh, textile is uh, tells a story and every uh, craft has a story. So it should be, it's like a, it's like a language, I would say, which is, uh, I believe it's uh, should be uh, passed on. So that's when I started uh, reading about Pulkari. And then uh, for my thesis, I created uh, five shawls. I went to Haripur. Haripur is a, is a village in north of Pakistan. And there are artisans who do Pulkari for uh, uh, their own livelihood. And there are lots of NGOs involved. And they create these pieces. They hire these women. And they give them a platform to show their uh, artwork. And I learned Pulkari from them. And I, uh, when I moved to Canada, I started doing it and I'm doing it since then. So yeah, pretty much that about it. But uh, I think now, now my work is a bit different in terms of creating Pulkari because it's not very traditional. I would say I, key, um, I use the Pulkari technique, but I create uh, uh, a bit modern designs. Like for example, this one I have over here. You see, I have Chevron in the middle but uh, it's not Pulgari, but the technique is the Pulgari. Like if you see the back side, sorry. It's just like Pulgari. You don't see the thread at the back, but yeah, you can obviously create something like this, just make a design and fill it in with Pulgari. So yeah, it's hard just how you kind of incorporate your work. I don't have anything else because everything is packed. There's a back, there's a felt behind it, but yeah, I do have, a few additional pieces to show. This one. And this one. This is Pulkari also. So, but these are very traditional Pulkari pieces. And uh, this one is another one. This one, the technique used for Pulkari, this one is also Pulkari. Uh, because you see there's no fabric, there's no thread at the back, it's just dotted lines. And uh, this, one is this one is just very similar to the straight line used in Pulkari because right now currently we're going one up. For the straight line, you just keep it at one straight line. You don't go one up, one down. It's just straight lines and the backstory will be like this. So once you do that, you can create anything uh, just using the satin stitch, like satin stitch or darning stitch, I would say. And just keeping it here. So Rafia, what's like your favorite kind of design to me amongst everything that you do? So um, I would say now uh, I my work is mainly towards, uh, uh, I've, if you've seen it's, uh, I get orders for a couple embroidery pieces. Yeah, so that's, I do have one. I think I've kept one to show. So it's mainly that I, I, I do, but I really enjoy creating cityscapes. So this is the one I just finished. And uh, so the, the backside is, uh, is with felt, so I can show the backside, but the technique over here is exactly the Pulkari technique, just straight lines. And that's how I try to incorporate and revive the craft by, keeping the Pulkari touch in everything. So you see these little diamonds are Pulkari. So yeah, I haven't shown, the, shown this on my page yet, but <laughs> I am done with it. 
How so, long yeah. does it take you for a typical piece like that? How long? I would say uh, I, I work when my daughter is sleeping. So I work at night when she's sleeping. And I would say like uh, it also depends on the size because this one is eight inches and uh, it took me about five days. Yeah, five days. Yeah. Five days in the sense that my daughter was fine. She's not bugging me and all. But yeah, it depends on her schedule. But if it's a smaller one, it doesn't take me much longer. But yeah, I kind of like how the uh, it's becoming more, Fulkar is becoming more of a, a contemporary, uh, it's taking a contemporary approach towards it. Making people is hard, I've been working. Yeah, making people is really hard. It is, it's, it's hard to ignore the little details so if you want to do, so I've made two lines, two chevron lines, but if you want to do the diamond, we can create diamonds over here because it's a 140. Maybe we, I can do one more line and then we can do diamonds because I think diamonds are pretty easy. If she, if you were able to do chevron, then diamonds are way too easy. So let, I'm just doing one, on a, on a, one more line. Diamond, please. Okay. So let's do diamonds then. I'm changing the color of the thread. All right. So um, if you want to do the diamonds, so anywhere in the middle, it's up to you. This, these are all diamonds, right? These are all diamonds. So anywhere in the middle, just pop through. Anywhere. Okay. And just, it's up to you how much longer you want to go in one straight line. I'm, I didn't count this, so I just, just one random line in the middle. I don't have diamonds over here. Yeah, but these are diamonds, you see, like these are diamonds, these ones, right? I don't have any diamonds over here. Oh, actually I have this one. So just, you can use diamonds to fill in the spaces. So, um, yeah. All right. So what you do is um, for diamonds, you will leave one hole from the top and one hole from the bottom. So we're making it narrower, right? So just leave one hole over here. Just leave the one, the initial point and come down over here. Okay, and then again, leave this one and go up. So you see how I am leaving both ends and just making it narrower. Just leave both ends, keep doing that until you will have two left at the end, or maybe I think three in the middle. So again, the same thing. Do you ever stitch the direction of the change the direction of the stitches uh what do you mean change the direction of the stitches like you mean uh this way the hoop or not keeping it in one straight line so again leave this one go up leave this one you see how it's getting narrower again the same thing Leave it. And now you see, I can, I can go further because now I have three holes at the end and I can make it. You see, I'm done with one side. So you do the same uh, mirror on the other side of the diamond. You go back over here. And the same thing. Keep doing that until you have two left. So here you go. And just make sure when you pull your thread, don't pull it too hard, just be very gentle because if you pull it too hard, it might get uh, messed up and uh, thank you. 
Yes, I can. Yeah, it's so uh, the stitches, it depends mm -hmm. also on the fabric. If, for example, the fabric uh, I'm using is very, uh, the weave is very tight, I try to, um, I, I draw this, uh, the design on the fabric and it just randomly, horizontal and vertically, I just kind of uh, do the embroidery. I don't follow the line. It, it all depends on the fabric, but this fabric has a very uh, symmetrical grid and it's easy to kind of follow the lines. So now I'm going to make another one in the middle. Diamonds are pretty easy. And if you're into embroidery, I usually use diamonds to fill in the background. So you can use like, for example, even this one, this is also a couple and to fill in the background, I use diamonds. So uh, this is how kind of I incorporate the Pulkari in every piece uh, I make. So obviously you kind of have to um, change your, uh, adapt to the market you're kind of catered to. When your piece is completed, what type of pack? Do you use so I use felt uh, to uh, to finish it off. This all is felt at the back. I I think I do. I uh, yeah. I, if you check my Instagram, I have a highlight uh, under the name uh, hoop finishing. I've actually explained how to do the backside, so you can check that. All right. My mom is going to be so proud of me today. It's not <laughs> even funny. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Traditionally, what material did women use in fun? Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. So that was the question I was I wanted to speak about. So, yeah, I was telling that initially they used to work on um, hand-woven uh, cotton. But uh, due to commercialization and how long it took, so they started ending up buying synthetic polyester fabric because it's easy to make and it's not too much of a work. And even the thread they would use was a uh, silk thread. So um, silk thread is very, very hard to use because, but the, the, I think the, the finesse uh, using silk thread is much better because you can see this one is silk thread. You can see the shine and the luster on the of the thread. And this one is the, the floss. It's not shiny, but it's, it might be shiny because of the light, but it's not shiny. And this one is shiny. So yeah, I think uh, with time, the fabric, the thread, it kind of uh, deteriorated. And uh, now they just use the, the synthetic fabric. It's not, it's not hand woven, I would say. So yeah, I, oh, where is your Instagram? Uh, I don't know. Uh, will you be sharing my Instagram page at the end or should I share it right now? You can share it right now if you've got the time to be able to put okay. it on the app. Let me, let me open it just a sec. Okay, here you go. I've sent the, oh yeah, let me send. So this is the Instagram, just got, save it because after the, um, the workshop it has ended, you can see the chat. Okay, this is the Lakeshore store for, So uh, this one is the store. I have sent the link. It's a, if you are in um, 
um, Toronto. This one is the best one and you just ask for this fabric. And I will send the Amazon link for the fabric, which is the closest one to Pulkari. And this one is the link for Pulkari, uh, the fabric. It's a DMC sand fabric. Uh, any other links? That's it. Yeah, I think so. And today's uh, recording will be on the uh, Art Gallery Mississauga's YouTube channel. So you just Google Art Gallery Mississauga YouTube and it'll come up um, for you um, in the link. And uh, uh, But give us a couple of days to be able to get it up on the, the, the channel. Um, but you'll be able to watch the whole thing again. So even with this, you can actually um, create uh, monograms. Like if you sketch it on your fabric and uh, then just fill it in with the satin stitch used in Fulkari, or you can make a zigzag, or you can use a chevron design. So it's up to you how you... The other fabric can be... Yeah, you can, you can, you can. I think the, if uh, Anush, Anusha, uh, if you're asking about the Gita shop, I told you, you ha they have lots of fabric and uh, you can ask for linen. Uh, it might be a bit softer for if you want to create a shawl or dubatta. So yeah, definitely check them out. So if you wanna show me your work, we have 10 minutes. I think at the end, yeah. Oh, wow, Ash, you're so fast. That looks so good. Okay, Mehek, I can see. Can you bring it much more closer? Wow, so neat. Good job. Very nice, Bonnie. Very nice, Mehek. Uh, Maria, so good. Very cool. Aisha, nice. Nice, very nice. Very nice, Rose. Very good. At the end, we'll just take a picture at the end. What does the back of the diamond look like? Oh, the back of the diamond. Very nice, Patma. The back of the diamond looks like this. It's just dotted, dotted ends. This is basically how the back of Pulkari should look like. No thread at the, no thread at the back, just dots, right? Um, I just had a question, like when you carry the thread over from one end of the diamond to back to the middle, then yeah. more of the thread would show on the back, right? More, more sorry, what? more of the thread would show versus just a dot. Can you show the back of the, yeah. of the diamond? So yeah. when you, you're going from one end yeah. uh, back to the middle, right? To do yeah. the yes. other side? Yes. So yes. That's, that's like a line of- That's like a line, yeah. But okay. you can always go through it. But since this is a very small diamond, I'm not going through the fabric. Through okay. the, uh, but yeah, you can always go through the design also. So through would be mean like let me let me threads. let me show you let me show you on this one just a sec. Okay. If you do not want any and if you want the back side to be as perfect as the front side, there's a way to hide the thread. So I'm just doing uh I'm just doing the straight one over here. I'm just making lines just a sec so for example if so for example if you, i have to make uh, two lines over here on this side instead of going oh sorry Instead of going over it, what I'm going to do is like over by over it, I mean 
Oh my goodness. Okay, so just a sec. Okay, so by over it, I mean if you don't want to go like this and you don't want this line, what you do is. Okay, sorry. It got stuck in the middle. What you do is just go through through like this. This way. Just go through. Right? How you make the knot, that's the same way you do it. Just go through your fabric from the back side. This way. And it won't okay. show over here. And when you pull it, it will be through the threads. This way. It, it's just less thread at the back. Yeah. And it won't show on the front side. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. So we'll have to make sure that doesn't poke in the front then, right? Yeah. And you're yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. No problem. If we're getting the Ida fabric from Michael's, what yeah. thread count should we be buying? It's, it's better to get 18 count because Pardon 14 me? has a lot of spaces. Uh huh. Yeah, so it would be better to get 18. Oh, okay. But even if you have a 14 one, what you do is, uh, like I know with 14, that's very like straight, straight, straight lines. But once yeah. you make that, what you can do is you can actually go back and then change another thread and just poke through, poke holes and just make another line in the middle. You can always do that. Yeah, so that's what I'm trying to do. I don't know how yeah. it's working out. Yeah, yeah. No, I know it's a bit tricky with the fabric, but yeah, uh, yeah you can always make that out. But can we buy Qadar in Qadar, whatever? Qadar, in, yeah. In uh, Where, Canada? Yeah, you can get from the Gita, as I've uh, mentioned it over here okay. uh, in the chat. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say um, get the Amazon fabric. That's the best fabric, the closest one in terms of getting it. I think there's a link over here. I've sent the link. So okay. please just save that link. A uh, large but traditional one will be like this, a very small but And so we have four minutes to go. What is the question? Are there any other questions? Or I'm going to put it on gallery view. Anybody else want to share their wonderful work that they did today? A lot of a lot of uh, non faces here. I would love to see your work. Yeah, I know. I'm just look chatting with their names. Yeah. I wanted to share, um, but I wasn't fully prepared for this. So I ended yeah. up having to do this on paper because the fabric I had, the threads were too loose. Um, is this I, paper? Wow. It, it is coming out really nice. And I, tried I really the like heart. the heart. Yeah. Yeah. And then the back, I was kind of missed it the first time when you explained it, but then I think yeah. I got it. You got it. You got it. Wow. Thank you for this. This has been great. I've always wanted to learn how to do this. Awesome. So. Awesome. That's really cool. That's really nice. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Um, I'll share. Yeah. Um, it's actually my first time. In but I look forward to trying this more. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Nice. Minha, it's so nice. It's so good. It's so neat. Very nice, very nice. Wow, I like the pattern you've made, Ulrika. Yulra, I don't know if I'm saying it right. Yulra. My name is Ulrika. Ulrika. But uh, oh, yeah, my fabric is uh, transparent. Uh, yeah. That's why I'm holding a piece of uh, paper behind it. And I oh, just, I see. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. It, I it's hard to. It. It's hard to look then, also, right? Yeah. Yeah. For that, uh, if your fabric is very transparent, what you can do is you can always have a black fabric in front and then do embroidery on top that's yeah. very visible then but i thought i'd just do a random pattern rather it looks really nice it looks really yeah. nice oh i'm enjoying it thank you very much awesome that's good that's good i'm glad okay aisha very nice aisha very nice thank you aisha. For sharing your skill with us no problem i'm glad you liked it okay well, lovely thank you thank you yeah
I can share mine. Um, yeah. It's been really interesting. And uh, my daughter is sick. Wow. So it was good to learn so that I can start when my grandchildren nice. come. It's so, it's so beautiful. Thank you. So beautiful. Uh, thank you, Angela. Okay, awesome. That was good. Good job. Just uh, when you take pictures, show me your work. You can tag my page and then I can see um, everybody, everyone's work. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank, well, thank you, guys. you for everybody for joining the workshop today. We'll be sending out an email and we'll and if you feel so inclined to actually take a photo and share your, yeah. your work with us, um, that would be great. Um, yeah. and we'll put in that email, the email that you have to send it to. So um, again, thank you so much for um, joining the workshop. And don't forget to take a look at the Art Gallery Mississauga Eventbrite page because there's a whole lot of other workshops coming up. The next one next Saturday is a writing workshop and will be, um, it's basically uh, storytelling. Uh, it's, it's learning steps to start writing your own story. So it's an hour long workshop. And then the following week will be, um, again, an another watercolor workshop um, with Carla uh, Casanova. So um, we kind of had uh, ways, uh, that, that workshop was very popular. And so we're actually um, doing it again because of the, uh, the popularity of it. So check out the event bright and join us for future um, workshops. And thank you, um, uh, Rafia, for sharing your talent with this this wonderful group. Oh, there's yeah, yeah look, awesome. Awesome. Looks awesome. Yeah, it, Ash it was. Is, yeah, there's some more people showing. So so yeah. please do share with us. Yeah, we'd love to tag see tag work. tag the art gallery of Mississauga and tag my page so that I can see. But thank you so much for coming. It was lovely meeting you all virtually. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everybody. Okay. And enjoy the rest of your day yeah. or evening, depending on yeah. where you're at. <laughs> yeah. Or sleep. Good night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.